hi, uh, my name is Yannick, and this is Tiago, and today we want to present Lava Tower Bar on flying laser with the bed So, um, first, this is the agenda for today. So, first, we are going to go a bit into the history uh, of what they do today, and then we are going into what are we doing and why are we doing it that way. Um, then, uh, yes, we will. Um, have a look at how you actually can use it as a basil when you use it to, when you use basil uh, and you know which which use case you can apply it from how you can pick it and in the end we will look at um, a couple of things like lifetime of credentials and also what we are planning to do in the future. So um, let's start with what we are the basis of that. Um, so as many of you know that three different kinds of remote service based can interact with. There is on one hand the uh, repository, the base has a way to download external repositories over HTTP, over Git, over probably other mechanisms that I don't remember right now. Um, there's remote passing which connects to that, so there's remote execution, there's remote download, uh, there's remote download of the aka the asset API. Um, there is the build event that uh, they can upload build events to and that usually gives you the nice results of the browser. Um, and there are probably more uh, things how they can interact with remote service. Um, many of these, especially in corporate <coughs> that companies need some sort of authentication because you don't want uh, people on the internet to download your internal repositories, obviously, or you don't want any external people to connect to the remote cache and potentially more people to download your source code from there. Um, and space supports a bunch of uh, different authentication mechanisms today. Like, for example, it has a lot of uh, CLI flags that we have to figure uh, that we can use to provide space with credentials. It has a couple of built in mechanisms, like, for example, for uh, connecting to Google Cloud uh, or to other Google services. It supports what kind of files. Um, and if you're using uh, repository downloads, it also has a way to use some Starlight with repository. Context download and authentication object. Um, now, the unfortunate thing about this um, this uh, patch of, of authentication mechanisms is that uh, how do you know which which uh, service, which part of data supports which authentication mechanism? It's back because it turns out not all of them support all of them. Right? It's quite obvious for the remote repository context download one, but would you have known that? Before Basel 5.3, you could have used NLC with, when uploading DS, probably not. Um, so the scope, uh, the some combination that does not support, right? But NLC support the Kickstarter in Basel 5.3, um, but that's that's no not there. And even if it is, the scope of remote mechanism isn't clear, right? There is, for example, the uh, flag for remote uh, minus minus remote adder. Would they expect that to work for BS as well? I honestly would not expect it. Well, it doesn't. Um, so the scope isn't entirely clear um, how flags uh, or how the authentication mechanisms, uh, which, which service they work with. So to solve this problem and also make it potential, we came up with the idea of um, adding potential helpers to base. Now, in uh, in a very quick overview, credential helper is just a binary that Basel uh, shells out to uh, calls out to to get credentials for connecting to remote service. And that credential helper binary that subprocess can do whatever it wants to create uh, to get the actual credentials. Um, we did this in this way um, to uh, to also work against binary float. Um, like Basel has for a couple of built-in mechanisms that I already mentioned, and just adding more does the scale, right? You just end up with a bigger and bigger base binary, and you're not going to use most of the uh, authentication mechanisms there. Yeah. Um, another problem is that uh, if they're based the base, they cannot be developed independently, meaning that if you're making a breaking change to your authentication mechanism, which servers sometimes do, you need an updated version of Basel, and if you're stuck on Basel 12 for whatever reason, probably going to not be lucky to ever get an update. Um, so you need to custom Basel. And the more things are in Basel, the larger the surface of bugs. 
decided to move the credential hypothesis outside of Beto. And that is also that pattern is also already existent by um, credential hypothesis for Git or for Docker or for many other services. Um, so let's look at the architecture of what we're doing. Right? I already explained a few of these, but um, here we have Beto as in the basis server running locally on your machine. And then here we have a couple of remote servers. Um, in this case, it is really can imagine that one is for like fetching inputs, one is for remote caching, and the other one is for having the app. Um, and basically, needs to communicate um, with all of them. Uh, so basically, needs credentials for all of them. So what do we? Got next slide, please. Um, so since those are potentially many different uh, services, like for example. The remote, the uh, the repositories uh, download thing might be your internal S3 or TCS bucket, while the remote server might be an edge code cluster or a build body cluster or a build barn cluster that you're self hosting, right? Um, so you potentially need different kinds of credentials and they can use different authentication mechanisms to base it with bots, um, having multiple credential helpers. And then depending on the remote server, the which then to have to use. Now, in this example, there is a one to one, uh, one, -to -one relationship between the remote service and the potential helper. It doesn't have to be right. You could have just one, but then if you are if you're using all of the, if all of these are for the same or use the same authentication mechanism, you just need one potential helper, for example. Or you can also have the case where um, you know you have two potential helpers. One is just for remote um, for the remote repository download. And the other two is used for remote cache and remote execution of the apps. Um, but Basel actually makes a lot of calls to these remote services. Basically, if you look at remote execution, every uh, every action execution is at least four RPC calls, I think. Um, so in both these potential helper every time, there is uh, basically not an option that would make execution rate too slow. So basically, internally, you have to cache. Um, Internally has a cache, so it has the credentials for some time that it got from the helper, so it doesn't have to work the sub process too many times. Um, the cache has a, a lifetime, like it, it's not cache indefinitely. Uh, Tiago will explain uh, about this later. Um, and if, um, yeah, let's go to the next time. So, okay, now we know how the how basically the active credential helper um, process. But let's look at how it exactly communicates with it. So the credential helper process is just a sub binary, uh, sub process binary. It can be written in whatever you like Python, C, Java, um, whatever you can imagine. And it is uh, invoked with the path to credential helper that is always up to the path. And then um, uh, the first argument on the command line includes the get to indicate, hey, give me credentials. But now that is the only about the protocol supports. But we might support more things in the future. And then, in addition to that, um, we provide the URI to connect to the full URI as part of the standard in, so that um, if there is more scoping for the credential helper, for example, um, that let's say you need to decide on the path or something which credentials to use, like for GitHub or S3, you can do that by reading the URL um, or the URI and then providing credentials for that. Um, now then the credential helper can do whatever it wants. And eventually it needs to provide uh, an object on standard out that provides a couple of headers. Um, right now you know, the credential helper only supports um, providing credentials with that header, so it seems like I'm still at least for it yet. Um, and right now the it's a it's a chasing object with just a single key header, but it's again an object with key value pairs of header name and header values. And since headers don't need to be unique. Um, the value is list of headers. And the protocol is designed in this way um, to allow backwards compatible uh, changes without breaking backwards compatibility. For example, if we were to uh, support MDLS or Swavia, it would just be another key, and existing helpers would continue to function. Um, what we didn't do is we used any of the existing helper protocols, like the one for Git or for Docker. And we did that explicitly because they are focused very much on username and password. Um, and that's the only thing they can actually provide. 
press, there are so many more authentication mechanisms there that run an arbitrary out of. Um, and I just see type of presentation is sitting here. Um, and there you can provide uh, just arbitrary headers. And now that we've talked about protocol, let's I give over to Tiago for the next. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about how you would configure Bazel to use one or more of these credential helpers. So the simplest case is you're basically using a single helper uh, to provide credentials for any service you might want to connect to uh, with the logic uh, possibly uh, switching on particularly your URI or ASCII credentials for. And in that case, you would just use the experimental credential helper flag with the path to, to, to this credential helper. A slightly more sophisticated use case is you might want to use different credential helpers depending on the service you're connecting to. And you can basically do this by specifying uh, either a specific domain or uh, a wildcard. Uh, so we support like one level of uh, subdomains. And that would be the, the second line there would mean that any request that goes to anything.service.org would delegate to the second credential helper. Um, you can also combine the two styles. If you add the third flag there, where, which is basically the same as uh, in the first example, anything else that doesn't match any of these domains that you're providing explicitly would fall back to uh, that credential helper or last resort. Uh, and there's two other flags which have to do with things that uh, Yannick has mentioned. Uh, so one of them is uh, there's a time limit for how long the credential helper might take to uh, respond. Otherwise, we just uh, give up and perhaps uh, try to get to some other way. Um, and there's a flag to control for how long we cache the credentials. Uh, I believe that right now it uh, defaults to uh, 30 minutes. Now, on the subject of caching credentials, uh, there's actually uh, a, quite a sophisticated problem here, which is that uh, usually credentials have lifetimes associated with them, sometimes even very short lifetimes. Uh, as Yannick said, we, we keep a, uh, a, a cache of credentials because we don't want to be calling the helper uh, repeatedly uh, over the course of a single base invocation. Uh, and we have the flag that controls the uh, for how long we, we cache them. Um, however, if you, if you call, uh, let's say, a remote execution service, and uh, at that time your uh, credential has already expired, uh, and you get a response back from the service saying so, uh, Bazel can actually automatically uh, call the helper for a fresh credential and retry that request that just failed because of, uh, of an expired credential. Uh, so uh, there is no risk that the build will, will fail because your credentials suddenly expired in the build, as long as your credential helper is able to provide fresh ones. Uh, there's, there's a limitation here in the way we implemented this, which has to do with uh, the, the authentication library we are using in Bazel. Which is that unfortunately, whenever we need to invalidate one of the credentials, we basically invalidate all of them because the authentication library does not let us invalidate on a, on a per URI basis. And we hope to somehow fix this someday, perhaps by uh, using a different authentication library or fixing, fixing, fixing it there. Um, so the current state of things is that we, we have implemented support for uh, remote caching and execution and the build event service on Bazel 5.3, and support for repository fetching is coming on 6, hopefully 6.0, but if, if it doesn't make it to 6.0, it will come in a point release short after. Some of the, some of the PRs are already submitted. Um, there's also a couple opportunities for future work. Um, so one of them has to do with the fact that for some kinds of credential, uh, you can actually do better than just trying the credential you have and if the server comes back with uh, credential expired, fetching a new one, uh, what you can do better is to actually associate the lifetime with the credential. And what we envision we, we can do here is to is extend the protocol so that the credential helper can communicate back to Bazel for how long the credential uh, is expected to be uh, valid. And then Bazel can, on its own, proactively uh, refresh a credential if it knows it has already expired by the time it wants to use it. Um, another potential avenue for extension has to do with the fact that right now um, you, you can't really have the credential helper uh, send you back a credential that is valid for a scope shorter than the subdomain. And this actually matters uh, uh, when you're doing stuff like GitHub repos or uh, S3 buckets 
where like the uh, the granularity of your credentials is smaller than 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 a host name, uh, and the uh, the idea for feature extension here is to also let the helper optionally return uh, a scope for uh, the leader credential. Uh, we expect that at some point we would actually uh, deprecate the other basal authentication mechanisms in favor of credential helpers because a large part of this is to actually avoid putting a lot of logic into basal that's specific to individual services. Uh, but before we do that, we, we, we want to uh, make sure that there's a well-known repository of credential helpers for all of the stuff that Bazel supports out of the box today so that there's an easy migration path out of the existing mechanisms. Uh, and uh, I think that's all we got. There's some links here if you want to look at the proposal or uh, browse the uh, PRs that have been submitted so far. Thanks. So there is uh, two uh, places that credentials are potentially stored. Um, one is in Basel inside the cache that just lives in memory, not in, on the file that's never written to disk. Um, and the other one is how the credential helper gets those credentials. The credential helper is basically free of whatever it wants to do. If it wants to read it from a plain text file, it reads it from a plain text file. If, you, if it wants to store it in, let's say, keychain on macOS and actually encrypt it, it can do that, right? But the protocol doesn't enforce any of that. It's up to the credential helper. So uh, does supporting repository rule meaning uh, you are going to expose this uh, credentials as some kind of uh, startup repository API? Uh, or for example, the Git repository uh, rule, it's actually calls the Git command line to on your system, right? So how does that work? So uh, the way it interacts with the repository rules is um, with through context download or download an attack. Okay. And there, um, Starlock would call the normal function, potentially with or without the auth mechanism, and then Basel would internally just call the potential helper. This is not going to be a direct approach to Starlock. Okay, so it won't be available for Git repository. It, it might not be doable for Git repository as it is currently today. Yes. Going a little further in horrors. Uh, I have a use case for action on some type of credentials. Say you're doing an integration test and it needs credentials to some system. And right now there's no, like, you can use like the remote header flag to set flags, but there's no way currently of saying, I want to expose some, some credentials or secrets to this action, but not this other action. Do you have any consideration for like piping this through to the rules API to allow like passing tokens effectively to actions? Um. There's, there's currently no concrete plan to do that. Um, if you would file a feature request to get up that book. Yeah, it's definitely a use case that we haven't considered. Like the, the, the intent was to take all of the places where Basil does authentication today and replace all of those with, with, the, with the helper. But yeah, admittedly, that's potentially useful. Yeah. <laughs> I added the previous use case, we're trying to do this on remote execution and struggling to get the credentials mapped all the way down there. Just added to the list of topics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any ETA on the uh, repo rules implementation? I have the R open um, to hook it up, but that's currently not working. Um, we are still hoping to get it into 6.0, which will be cut for in December, I think. Yep, it's planned right now. It's already cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, I, what we meant was a cherry pick. Yeah, uh, if we can make it, we will cherry pick it into 6.0. If if we miss the deadline, it'll be in 6. Point whatever, yeah. like the next minor or whatever. But we are, we are pretty close to landing at all the so. Except make it in 6.0. Yeah, I think so. Yes? Do you have some standard uh, credential helpers already in 5.3, like the one for GCP, let's say, or? Uh, we don't. That's, we don't. that's definitely uh, 
something that, that we need to do at some point if we are to replicate everything else. Okay, so you would use the existing mechanism for now. Right, yeah. It, it won't, uh, the way it's implemented is that it uses a credential helper, and if there's none configured for the domain, it falls back to whatever base it did before, which right. can be TCP or NFS or whatever. Okay. Yes? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. That's a very clear, maybe. Um, so empty lats, Basil, um, empty lats is currently differently implemented in Basil, doesn't go through any of the existing authentication mechanism that is very special. Um, it is possible to solve it with the credential helper in the future, and we might do that. We, we already know how it would look like, we just haven't prioritized it. Um, again, if you could write that into the issue or something, and so we can track it and see how how important it is for people, that would be great. Um, it shouldn't be a big addition. I think the like allowing the repository itself to describe the credential helper that we can download, like fetch, so that you've got that figure with the credential helper. That is a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Um, because that repository will remind again to download from something. Um, but now we have been not planning to do that. Um, similarly, you can't have, you can't build your credential half of a phase and then use it as part of the book. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, that is definitely something we could consider in this situation. Thank you. Any additional context when the credential helper is run so that I don't know, like, like say two different teams have to consider the same repository, but they want to, depending on which part you're compiling, want to, want to run that. Um, so the credential helper already gets the environment variable from the basal invocation. So there's a way to propagate, for example, environment variables. Um, additional context about what the build is for is currently not provided, and like the target pattern or whatever you're building. Um, I was thinking more like config, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, guess your, your best option right now yeah, would be to stick it in an environment variable. Like anything that's passed to, to the Bazel server process as an environment variable also gets propagated to potential help. So that's one way out of it. Yeah, it, it uses the environment variable from exactly the Bazel invocation from the Bazel. Binary thing, not. It doesn't use actually sensor for that. We put and whatever that's for. Um, yes, that's environment driver is currently your best option to provide. Okay. 